Hello everybody, it's Big Boy Sports here, and boy oh boy, if you missed this game, which I don't blame you, if you watch the NFL today, I don't blame you, I don't blame you at all if you did, but you missed some good lacrosse today, you missed it, and in this title game between the Chaos and the Water Dogs, the Water Dogs finally prevailed, three years in the making for this team. I'm happy because I'm a Water Dogs fan. I know there's a lot of Water Dogs fans out there. They're happy. We're all happy. Chaos got to be feeling a little bit disappointed themselves, you know. Um, honestly, they had this game in the first half and everything like that. They had this game, you know, like locked up for like the first quarter, you know, with Byrne, O'Keefe, I mean, the whole nine yards. But then you got guys like Karen McArdle who really, honestly, you know, should have been way more into your BP conversation. Dylan Ward out here playing lights out. Mikey Sowers, you know, being the sensation that he is. And Connor Kelly as well, you know, for these dogs. I mean, what a resilient team. This team, this Water Dogs team overcame injuries throughout the entire season. There were injuries upon injuries upon injuries. And they just overcame it all. Like, you overcame all these injuries to, you know, win a championship. Like, like the quarterfinals were pretty boring because all three games were pretty boring. You know, the semifinals were a little bit better because, you know, the Water Dogs actually beat the Whipsticks. Like, it was crazy because the Water Dogs were still very much banged up. But they beat the Whips. And then, of course, you know, the Chaos got to deny the Archers a chance to play for a title again. You know, same old stuff. Same old stuff, but there was not there. There couldn't be a repeat champion, especially a team that went two and eight in the regular season. No, 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 no. And you know, again, I continue to ask, you know, and we all continue to ask as PLL fans, like, when are things about the postseason going to change? Because it's NFL Sunday, bro. We really should be happy. Same thing with the WBA. Like, I think I will eventually start covering the WBA myself, and. Game for the WNBA finals is also today. They need to, like some of these leagues need to change it. Like like yeah, there's some like NASCAR that you can't really convince to change because they're older and established. But some of these young upstart leagues like the PLL need to change how they do their postseasons and stuff like that. How how things are handled, and it's not just you know that. But I I'm so happy all the teams that made it to the playoffs, which is seven of the eight teams of the league. Congrats, congrats to Chaos on a great playoff run. And congrats to the Water Dogs for finally winning with the championship. They got close in 2021. They couldn't get out the first round in 2020. They made it to the city finals in 2021, but they finally got it with the guys they got. And, you know, the PLL offseason, we already know that Albany is the first stop next year. But, you know, you wonder. What in the world is 2023 going to look like? I hope, you know, because the World Lacrosse Championships are are in San Diego next year. I wonder if there's going to be, you know, something to do out in San Diego. I hope PLL considers going, you know, to San Diego like the week before or whatever. Next season, I hope they consider that. But if not, I don't know. I don't know. I hope they come back to Frisco too because, I mean, th that would be nice because I missed it this year. I missed it. Um, but, yeah. So there you have it with the PLL. Um, Fate of a Sport, it also debuted on like ESPN+. Plus. It had a replay shown on ESPN and ABC before the championship game today. If you missed that, great documentary. Um, I didn't watch all of it, but I know there was some good tidbits from it. Now, for all the other stuff, let's get to the other stuff uh, You know, to wrap this all up. Iona, they're going to add lacrosse. Good for them. They're going to join the... The Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, I, I swear I get that wrong. The MAAC in 2024-2025, you got the NLL Draft. That was, yes, no, that was a week and a day ago. Um, there's some stuff that the NLL, you know, put out about the luxury tax, salary cap, cap and player contracts in the CBA. There was some stuff that got put out there. Uh, again, World Lacrosse Championships for 2023. That'll be in San Diego from June 21st to July 1st of next year. 
uh, the PBLA, they had a combine um, from September 9th to September 11th. I haven't heard anything from them since then. Um, players are starting to get signed. Virginia and Maryland really are the two biggest players there. Virginia got the number one recruit for the 2024 class, McKay Millen. McKay Millen, excuse me. Um, and I know Maryland, you know, is going to be right up there along with, you know, some other ACC teams and stuff like that. Um, it's it's going to be real, real intriguing to see how the recruiting stacks up because, again, I think, you know, there's going to be some, some damn good players coming out of these high schools and stuff like that going into college, making making a ruckus in college. And I'm glad we got another team in Division One too. Hope we could get, like, some, you know, some more Southern-based teams. I think that'd be cool, <laughs> you know. Um... Let's see what else. Oh yeah, the the, uh, the Chase Scanlon situation. Um, this was just recent, actually. There was a USA magazine, a USA Lacrosse magazine article that they um, ended up deleting over some comments that Scanlon made. Now he got signed to Vancouver, and the bad thing about that is, is uh, unfortunately, Mans did some domestic violence type stuff, which is never okay. I don't care if you're drunk, which I believe in this case he was. I don't care if you're drunk, you know, high, you know, sober. It's never okay to be a domestic abuser. It's never okay. Uh, I don't think it's... Um, from what I understand, he never even apologized for it, and nobody's taking accountability for it. Yeah, you know, not saying anything. Vancouver's not saying anything. Nobody's saying anything. Um, not, not the way you want. Um... That's some bad publicity right there, you know, for the NLL. I'm sorry. It just is. You, you can't you can't have this type of stuff anymore in 2022. Like, you know, once people find out about these sorts of things, you know, it it's all over. It's all over. And I hope the NLL actually releases their schedule soon. I know it's supposed to be um, a lot of people have projected September 29th for it, which will be too late for me because by then I will have, you know, moved on full speed into you know college football NFL and we're already full speed into that and, and um, college basketball NBA so by the time you usually see this you know your your the NLL schedule will probably have come out you know after this video has come out and everything like that but what did you guys think of the Water Dogs winning their first championship what did you think of the PLL playoffs, do you think the PLL playoffs should move a little bit? I, I'm still of the proponent that the PLL should move their championship to Labor Day Sunday. I still think they should do that. There's actually not a lot on ABC during those times. You know, there's like usually like a WNBA game or something like that. And we know the MLS is moving off of ABC, so we can put we can we can actually do this. So we can we can get the rabble rows to see that you know having a championship on an NFL Sunday is not a good idea you put it on that you put it on that Sunday in between you know um, Labor Day and stuff like that you know the week before the NFL starts the Sunday in between you know the college football games like the, it's just college football you know during like every day during that first week of the season you know like that first Labor Day weekend there's always college football on you get you get the championship done there. You get you know you know you get you get these bye weeks sorted out. You get rid of the All Star game, which I think is completely stupid. Uh, you know, d do whatever you need to do. Yeah, I get it. You're gonna need bye weeks because like the World Lacrosse Championships, and everything like that. But otherwise, other than that, you know, let's get rid of the All Star game. Let's get there's like two or three bye weeks every season. I think we could get rid of at least one. You know, and everything, and just improve the product the, the best way we can. Improve, grow the game. I'm, I'm glad there's been people that watch lacrosse and have commented on some of these videos, and I'm glad I've been covering, you know, the leagues. You know, I know there was the Man Cup too. Um, you know, but I don't, I don't really know anything about the senior leagues and stuff like that. I don't really, I don't really care for like lower, you know. And I use that in quotations because I mean. There's just talented lacrosse players in every level, you know. Like I don't watch high school or anything like that, or you know, it was it took a hassle for me to watch the U21 uh, championships too. You know, it, it was a hassle for me to watch that. Uh, but 
I'm glad I'm glad we did it, and I'm glad that we got through the season. It's been a long season. I'm happy that we made it. Um, 2023, you know, going forward, gonna be covering lacrosse on this channel each and every year. You know, I'm glad I'm glad 2021 was a little little test. 2022 became the first season that we really you know went all in on it on everything, and I'm I'm glad we did. So, until Monday night, I'll see you all, and let's go to the game together. Big Boy Sports signing out, and enjoy the second half of the NFL games.